Let's get front office lows in here. He's the man that knows the cap bonuses and all of that. He's the one that gets you good. Front office lows don't give a word. He's the guy who knows the law. Can't put him against the wall. He's the guy with all the answers. Matt and Chuck are backup dancers. Front office lows knows it all. Front office lows. Front office lows brought to you by Delos Vodka, which actually, you translate it, means of lows. Family run business. You got the wife of the family actually handles all the accounting all out of Fort Worth, Texas. Small <sighs> batch vodka. I I, I, I wasn't a good friend because when I got a couple of the bottles, I didn't share them with you guys. So next run, <gasps> I'm going to bring you guys a couple of bottles. Very kind of you. Cocktail oriented. You know, make a make a nice you know Moscow mule for your wife. It's it's perfect. Bring it, bring it here early. Buck and I'll do some shots, get hammered before he starts B and K, and I go on the syndicated gig. That sounds like a good plan. We'll we'll, uh, we'll work it from there. So. I want to give you kind of an overview of where the Atlanta Hawks are in terms of their money and why this program right now is stuck. Here's the deal. So next year we're looking at an NBA salary cap of about $103 million. Of course, you can go over that into the luxury tax if you want. The Hawks, now this sounds good when I tell you this. The Hawks have $64 million that are set up for next year. All right. Yeah, Hawks. Woo! Woo! Sign Clay and Steph. Both. Okay, now here's the problem. Oh. Millsap technically is a guy where you don't really have his money as part of the cap. It's a $21 million player option. If he decided to pick it up, well, then it's $85 million. That's not going to happen. But the problem is you have all of these player holds. This will be uh, Ilyasova, Thabo, uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. You have about $33 million in cap holds. So if you want to clear cap space, you basically have to say, Tim Hardaway Jr., hey, we're not going to bring you back. You gotta, you gotta take off here, uh, Thabo. No interest. You gotta move on from here. That clears off that money off your cap. What you end up getting down to when you start adding together the money that you currently have allocated for the cap holds and the money that you would have for Millsap, you've got sitting right about thirty nine million dollars to play with. And if you're talking about signing back Millsap at about thirty million. Suddenly you have no money to play. I can't in. do that. If they want to keep Tim Hardaway, they're going to have to move somebody else out to keep Tim Hardaway in. And that's the problem. You start going through all the numbers. You start thinking about, well, I want to move Bays. Well, Bays is $17 million. You've got to find somebody else who'd be willing to do it. If you bring up Dwight Howard, right. which his salary basically sits right just, just a little bit below $24 million. with the NBA rules, you have to take $18 million in contracts back. They are stuck. And your only choices right now are let Millsap go you'll, and use the space for something else. Yeah, you'll be more stuck if you sign Millsap, yeah, you will. You'll actually be worse off. If Millsap leaves, go look at the free agent list. Gordon Hayward's not going to come here. There's nobody else within any kind of interesting free agent that would come here. But you're advocating signing a 32, 33, 34, yes. 35-year-old Correct. to about 30 couple million a year because the only way you would ever get a chance to have someone else come play here of any stature whether that's realistic or not i don't know would be to have dennis and and paul here the nba is built simply in this era right now on putting three stud players together it's not on getting the number one draft pick and hoping it's a generational player because most times it's not it's about lebron going to cleveland Kyrie's there and they get love it's about steph and draymond and Kyrie, or okay, Steph and, problem and Clay with, and Draymond, who are there. It's, it, that's why the, the the Spurs went and brought Lamarcus Aldridge in. You got to have three stars. You got to do it that way. Big problem. With what you're saying, you you just labeled this year's free agent class as a dud. Correct. So we got to have Dennis and Millsaps, and then convince a star to come here. All right. Well, you can't do it this all season. Yeah, so now next, we're to summer of yeah, 2018. It's still a better and option. Now he's 33 or 34. You don't want to let him walk away here because if you do, and they're not going to. Like if Paul leaves, it's because Paul wants to leave. The Braves. Want him? The uh, Hawks want him back. They do not want to start over. They are not. In, they are not about that rebuilt life. That is not where they're going. If he's fifteen and nine next year, that's a pretty good season for a guy at his age. Fifteen and nine. Nobody. Hey, I got to go get a run going with Millsap. No, but the alternative is you are just a, a team that's twenty six, twenty seven wins, who's not drawing flies at the arena, and that's that's a problem. Now, what you would love to have happen, and this would be in the pie in the sky, everything works out for you world is that you have a restricted free agent contract basically set up for Tim Hardaway Jr., and you have a deal in mind with Paul Millsap, but you allow it, because remember, you've got bird rights here, which means you can pay him more, and you can go over the salary cap in order to sign your own. Right. So the goal ends up being, I got $39 million, 
let's go shopping. And once we spend a certain amount of this for a couple of extra pieces, then I sign my own guys and go over the cap. But the that's order the question. matters. But that's, the yeah. order matters and the ownership matters. We've got to see what that number is going to be at. They've been allowed to go right up to the cap and go a little bit over. How much over can you go? Okay, Paul Millsap's not a Hall of Famer, um, and he's always been a really, really good ball player. Well, the four years that he's been here, he's made four All-Star teams. So I don't mean to be out of line, but I'm going to give you another example. The Lakers had no choice. You had to re-sign Kobe. And you know what Kobe wound up being? Old guy who couldn't play anymore, and because of the salary cap, now they went way over. His final season in Los Angeles cost the Lakers $90 million for Kobe because of salary and penalties. I think we're going to have to adjust our minds for what's going to happen. And I'll give you this, Chuck, and I don't expect you to get this right off the top of your head. Do you guys know who has the biggest contract in NBA history right now? It's Mike Conley with the Grizzly. Right. Grizzly. I saw that, yeah. Nine, excuse me, five years, $152 million. He's a 29-year-old guard. Now, he's good. He's good, but, he, no, but again, it's timing. It's I don't not think about, he's ever made an all-star team. No, it's, it's time. You're it's right. Timing. It's timing and just where you're at. And so we, We've got to move past the he's not worth it, he can't win you a title thing. These guys, the timing of it makes it where Memphis couldn't lose him, and Memphis yeah, isn't winning well, a title. I'm not going to say that I have a chance to win because I just re-signed a 32, 33, 34-year-old dude. But everything you said about him and what he is, Chuck, is what's going to get paid in this league in a crazy right. amount. And we just got to be like, that's how it's going to be. You know what? I wish somebody else would have paid base more. I wish somebody else would have yeah. paid Dwight Howard. I and would a year from now, we're going to sure. wish somebody else had paid. We're a year into Dwight Howard going, what, how could we get out from under? A year or two, we're going to look at Paul Millsap and go, wow, wish we wouldn't have done this. No, you see, the, the wish you wouldn't have done it means there's another route towards this. There's no route. They're, they're stuck. They're, they're stuck. No, that's but, not, I don't know there's, if there's another post player in the entire Eastern Conference. I don't want Dwight there's, Howard. There's not another route. I mean, Chuck's, he's going to bang his head into the wall until he realizes there's no route. The NBA doesn't give you a route. That's front office lows. We're rootless. We are rootless, man. It stinks.